Hey everyone, welcome to Tint Wisdom of number 105. Um, today I'm with Alfonso Severa from Polaris Tint Wraps in California, yeah? Yep. Welcome. Nice to right meet you. Right here. In, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, nice meeting you too, man. What, I'm what part of California are you nervous, then? but we're like, if you um, it pointed right in the middle of California, that's where we're at. We're like right dead center okay. in that Central Valley. Yeah, we're by Fresno, Modesto area. Nice. Have you grown up there? Uh, well, yeah, pretty much all my life I kind of grew up in this area. I was a little bit in the Bay Area up north, like the Oakland, San Francisco area, but most of my life I've just been over here. Just, you know. Cool. So you're, um, you mentioned you're a second generation tinter. So why don't, like, maybe a good place to start is not only where you began tinting, but um, where your father began tinting and, like, catch us up all the way to the present. Yeah, sure. So um, my dad, um, my grandpa, he used to um, customize, I guess, like semi buses and like uh, buses and transportation buses in Mexico. I guess that was really big in Mexico. You would just customize it. Have you ever seen the movie Nacho Libre? No, but I, I know the movie. I know of the movie, but I haven't seen it. Oh, he, at the end of the movie, he wants to buy a bus for the kids, and it's all customized, like a luchador church thing. It was really popular, dude. So I mean, that's what my dad would help my grandpa do. And um, I guess he started figuring out how to do window tint, uh, kind of by, like, the Tijuana area and stuff. So that's what he started doing. And then slowly but surely, he started showing his brothers how to do window tint, which were all my uncles. And then from there, um, you know, once they got their visas and they were coming over here to just – uh, expand and kind of just make their lives over here and stuff. Um, yeah, my dad, you know, he had my two older brothers and um, he started attending in Los Angeles. Then he went to New Mexico, then Arizona, then in Oakland. And then in Oakland, that's where I was born. But from there, all of my uncles knew how to tent too as well. And then it was just a community of tenders that pretty much he made himself. And then, um, yeah, so then from that, I pretty much picked up the trade from my brothers my dad was the hardest one on us uh, because he was just really strict on window tinting and making sure you would get it right so then my brothers were even more stricter on us we kind of wanted some freedoms but we couldn't escape window tint at all so instead of us waking up saturday morning to cartoons we had to wake up to hey we're gonna go to the flea market pack up all the stuff five in the morning and we're gonna go to work and so that's how it was every single time so I feel like at, for a while, window tinting was kind of a burden because I wanted to live a life. I wanted to go hang out with my friends, but it just wouldn't happen. Um, same thing with my older brothers. There was just that constant pressure of just doing it. And I mean, like my dad, he would use the excuse like, well, you have a roof on your head, right? It's because of window tinting. So just get to it. And it was like, oh, well, whatever, you know, like it is what it is. But now after that, um, as the years gone by, I've been through a lot of window tint um, I want to say like scenarios or just business scenarios where I've gone to tent at high end shops. I've gone to tent at really low end shops. I got to see like the ins and outs of different businesses and different models that were really successful. And also they were just failures too as well. And then, uh, recently about five years ago, um, I had the opportunity to help my dad build a shop for the first time that was going to be like, Hey, I'm going to quit my job over here at a 3M shop you know to go and do this with you but you got to let me do it and so once i did uh we've been up for about five years right now and uh, yeah it's been going good ever since so that's pretty much just in a nutshell like what has gone from being my dad to well my grandpa to my dad to now me over here that um leaves us with a lot of questions and a lot of um a lot of follow-ups <laughs> to, to take apart there so um, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> first and foremost, uh, congratulations on your, your shop and um, congratulations on having seen like so many different sides of the, the business. And I think it's especially like, I, I find it especially special for you to be like working with your dad now um, and have that kind of come full circle and so on. So um, let's kind of start um, just reading some of the comments. Uh, you know, Marco said, wow, three generations, beautiful. Um, he also said, this guy sound, seems like a nice guy, total sweetheart. So you obviously <laughs> give, give off a great um, a great vibe. Like it's just, um, 
What stands out to you from all the different scenarios you've been in? You said you've been in small and unsuccessful shops, you've been in large successful shops, and now you're you know, in your own shop building it with your family. What are some of the things that you drew from both of those different experiences that you're um, applying now in your shop? Um, well, I feel like, let's start with the high-end ones, right? Um, so the way that we would work is the easiest way for us to start tinting, right, would be um, acquiring a business license, and then we would be subcontracted by a stereo shop, a body shop. We would just sure. go somewhere and say, hey, do you, have you offered window tinting, yes or no? We'll work a deal out. We'll work a percentage. Let us use your building. If you want to use the material, we'll cut you a cut, whatever the case may be. And so from that, we were able to get into some really cool shops, you know, and just meet different people, different leaders. So I, there was some nice high-end shops that I would see. I think one of the ones was in a city, Union City. Um, and this shop, it was like a really nice auto body. We do everything here kind of shop. But this is the type of shop when you walk in there, like it looks like some type of West Coast Customs type of shop. Um, the floors were beautiful, high-end cars, you know, custom cars. Um, when, when I would see that, I would see myself when I would do this, right? And then tomorrow on Saturday, I have to go work at the flea market. So I'm literally in dirt. Um, and so to me, when I would see high-end shops like that, you know, that would inspire me all the time to say, I could do way better than this. And sometimes um, the limitations that are kind of set around us, I feel like if this guy's doing it, I can totally do that. Why not? And sometimes it was hard for me to pass that mentality on to my family because sometimes we would be in that comfortable zone. Um, so I think the first thing was just the inspiration to say, if everybody can do these nice businesses, why can't we, you know? Um, I think the second thing out of these high-end shops that I really like is the organization that they had. I feel like that's really key uh, compared to a lot of the lower-end shops that I would see. I mean, I feel like maybe for you or for a lot of, other tin shops, this is like common sense. Like it's like, if you want to, you think, have to be organized. I don't think it is common sense. I think, um, for me, I think it's common sense, me personally, but I, I'm not right, saying that that right. makes me any better than anybody. I'm just simply saying for me, <laughs> that's, that's where my heart goes is like, it goes to organization. Like it just, that's where it is. But I think it's very normal. I would say, I, I bet you 99 out of a hundred tenters, if we ask, you know, um, in, in the last years we're using pen and paper in a book and maybe just right. driving around and maybe using their personal vehicle. And I don't think like an organized um, business is common sense in this industry. I think that's kind of what makes it such an opportunity in this industry is you don't have a million organized companies and it's hard to compete in. You kind of have this, we're seeing like this growth stage. And like you said, it's coming from people seeing online mostly what other shops are doing and going, hey, if you can do that, I can do that. If you can put down Swiss track flooring and sell tin shop for $600, I can do it as well. And we don't have to charge exactly. 150. So it's like everybody's raising the bar for everybody constantly. And it's, it's changing the industry and the customer experience, the whole thing. Right. And I feel like one of the major things that, you know, I feel like you have to have some type of authenticity in your heart to say things like when you see that, instead of you envying someone for that, you say, like right. you help each other out because you're at such a high level. And I feel like when I went to the lower end shops mm -hmm. and said there, there wasn't that authenticity anymore. It was more like, I just want to make a lot of money. I just want to be rich. I want to be a step ahead of everybody else, which that's not bad, you know, but when it's fueled by something that's not real or just an illusion of um, like, how do I say it? It's just like, you're you're doing you're hurting people instead of doing things to help others. Uh, I would see these low end shops that they would put down other businesses, but they're fighting for small grains right. of like small business accounts or small dealership accounts that they don't really matter. It's like, dude, that's their food on the table. Like, why are you gonna go do that just so that you can try to win everybody sure. and stuff? So when I've seen people that do that, literally their businesses have collapsed. I feel like. I, I want to say the attitude of the heart that really matters in a lot of those things that I've seen the smaller, like the lower end shops kind of fall off. And then also too, as well, um, just like how they manage their money. I think that's the biggest thing that I've had struggled with because no one, no one in my family has taught me how to manage money. It's just, Hey, 
we made this much this week. We're going to survive this month. We're going to go on to the next one. But it was never like having a savings account, investing, um, you know, hey, we're going to set the money aside to invest in a large amount of window tint. Stuff like that never really occurred to me. So when I started seeing all these businesses that like they have quite a bit of money that they're, they're incoming a lot, you know, I would see the, sh- the money they would do and then the money that we would give them half and half, right. Or whatever percentage we worked out with them and stuff, mm-hmm. they're just blowing it. You know, they're, they're buying, you know, this is the time when I think it was like 2006, I think when like Hummers were out, everybody wanted the Hummer, everybody wanted the Challenger that just came out. Everybody wanted the Camaro. Yeah. So yeah, they're doing all this stuff and they're just blowing it. And then when I have to come and do my job, it's like, Hey, why did you, why did they cut off the power? Right. You didn't pay the electricity bill. Why not? You know, like I thought you're, you're good, you know? Yeah. So I, I feel like there's just a lot to take from both ends. Right. But when I've seen, you know, I think the most common thing that I've seen honestly is just like how honest you are with your trade and your business. I think that's the main thing. If you're not honest about it, um, you know, too many people I see, they just want to jump in it for being famous. So right now, I think the new hype right now is, being online famous right now, I feel like people kind of fall into a trap like that. They just think because if they could learn how to tint a window or something, they're going to post it online and then they could, they could front something to say, I know how to do this, but no then way. you really look at the quality of the work. Dude, oh, well, I yeah. so many people. Oh, I know what you're saying. You said no way. Not, oh, I yeah. did say no way, but I kind of thought of it first. Like you meant like, <laughs> like people are just like doing it. Like, like, like they're renting jets. They're like pretending to tint. And I think more oh, of what you're I, saying is they're just like maybe inflating their in- experience level. Hey, I've seen both of them actually. Right, I've seen that, both of them. That I know ways. exists, but I'm just saying, I don't think there's like influencers out there that are like, all right, this week we're going to pretend to tint. But there are people who probably spend a lot of time saying how good they are when maybe they have a lot to learn. Exactly. And honestly, I feel like a lot of people, they fall into the trap to say, oh, Oh, I am an influencer. It's like, no, you're not. You know, like you're just supposed to be a business doing a service to people. And if you happen to impact people, or impact your community, you know, even then I wouldn't still include you to be an influencer, you know, like to say that you can brag about it, you know? And I feel like that's the honesty of the heart of the trade. My dad would always say that if you don't respect window tint, window tint is not going to respect you. And so that's I a, felt like that's, that's, the everything. Main, that's the main key. Yeah. That's the main key, you know? Yeah. I think the biggest lesson, like, or the, like, with, I think everybody, not everybody, I think there's a lot of people out there with the money that you're talking about earlier that just, I think if fundamentally they look at their business, because it's hard when you're, especially like if you don't have a shop, if you're mobile and you don't have any overhead, you have no staff, you have nothing, it's hard to not feel like every dollar is your dollar. So if it's like coming into you, it's your money, you earned it. And if it's going out back to the customer, you're losing it. So it's like a weird relationship. And I think the way you need to think about money as a business is, you know, you're going to have a job within the company. Maybe you're an installer. Maybe you're an installer, receptionist, an accountant, maybe whatever it is. And you're going to get paid a certain amount for that job. And that's the amount. You should have that amount in my head. I need to make $1,000 a week in my business. But that means if you make $1,600, $600 is not yours because that's the company's money. It's not your money because you didn't earn it. You earned a thousand, which is how much right. you needed to earn. And once you can have that separation and go, you know, hey, we killed it this week. We made six thousand dollars in profit. All right, that means I have one thousand for me and five thousand that I can use to try and make the company better, so I can increase my salary. When you think of it along those lines, it's it's. I think it starts to make more sense because if you get used to making two or three thousand dollars a week in your pocket by by hustling, it's really hard to go backwards from there. Or like, you know, how do you? Right. And honestly, um, another thing that I used to do, right, is, well, in between the times that I've been working, too, I've also pretty much done mobile service as well. Uh, My dad has been one that he likes to just like, hey, we're going to get a job out in Reading. It's like, you don't even know where Reading is at. This is way before GPS, too. Just take it. Just say yes. He would buy like a book and a map. Yeah, he would figure it out and we would just go. Right. Um but there's sometimes too as well where honestly there's been times that I never had that luxury where I just had to just hope someone would call me to tin a car or something so that I could make somewhat ends meet. So literally it would go to a point where I would have to go to the extremes of just ordering business cards and I would have to walk the streets and right. just put business cards on people's cars and, and I would hope someone would call me, you know? Yeah. So and it worked probably, like, right? honestly, dude, there would be days where like, I, I would just sit there and pray and be like, God, please send me something because I have nothing right now. Right. And 
we would get work. You know, sometimes I would see people like, what are you doing to my car? I'm like, oh, no, nothing. I'm sorry. I'm just leaving a business car. And they were just like, don't ever touch my car again. I'm like, oh, my bad, you know? So, yeah, you get a lot of people like that. But there's people that, I mean, there's things where it's like, sometimes we don't have the luxury of like, well, I'm trying to save up all this, but I have to use it for all this stuff. And now I have nothing right. now, you know? So I wouldn't want to say like, I think tough, you know, the modern day version of handing business cards on like cars and knocking on doors is probably like scouring Facebook groups and posting in like your local groups. Because I think we are at a point where like, I wouldn't want to be putting shit on people's cars or going up to anybody's door. Oh, yeah. It's not worth it. Cause if, it, oh, yeah. if it's like one person out of like 5,000, it could be an expensive customer. You know what I mean? Right. And I mean, honestly, like my, my dad was really big on like yellow pages. Yellow pages was like the Holy grail. To it him. was it's like, if you're on yellow pages. Yeah. Imagine that's the, that's it was the though. Don't re- right. Yeah. I, I, feel, I really, I wish people could realize the luxuries that they have right now to make a, a business right now. Right. It's like back then, if you could be on yellow pages, like that was legit. If you, um, what the, was the other one the, too as well? I forgot. The the mar there was no like back then there weren't like marketing tools, such powerful marketing tools at everybody's hands at low barrier to entry. Like you can, you know, run a Facebook ad and target people just as a big brand would for five or ten dollars. And like nothing like that existed 15, 20 years ago. Like you were getting a billboard, you're in the newspaper, you were in a magazine, but those were all big spends. And not something you right. could just do overnight. Hey, and real I quick. I wish people would realize. Oh, yeah. what was the sign in the background? We just lost it. I don't want to forget. Oh, I'm sorry. Which one? The one in the back over here? It looked like that a motivational one. Marco asked. Say, uh, it was like a quote? Yeah. Yeah, it says, once you know what failure feels like, determination chases success. Once you know what failure feels like, determination. Yeah, I think that's a good one. I like it. Yeah, I have, I have like two on my other windows. It's just things that like that's I have. really good I've one. had several. I have an employer right now. His name is Eddie. And my wife, she's the one that pretty much does the work with me right here. Um, all of my, the rest of my family, it's like my two older brothers. One has a shop on the Bay Area. Another one has about 20 minute shop away from me. My dad doesn't like sitting at a shop and waiting for work. He likes to be on the road, man. Like he's just a on the road guy. So he has a mobile service setup thing. So it's like as much as I want to have everybody sit here and help me out because I, I have like a game plan that I want to initiate. It's kind of like everybody likes to do their own thing still, you know? So I have my, my wife here and my employee here, and I try to motivate them in any way possible. Um, and just every single time when they got to cut a window like that, you know, it's like just look at that, you know, just be motivated all the time, you know? And I, I, I would hope that's the environment that I give here. And kind of just when I talk to customers or just even people in my community just to feel – something you know i feel like like i'm i'm telling you i feel like so many people take so much stuff for granted nowadays even if it's just business or how like you know yeah. i mean i don't know i want to ask you how long have you been in the in the window film industry i mean if you know about some of this stuff you know i mean i'm only 29 but i feel like just because i've been with all of my family and my dad and stuff i feel like you know i feel just as old as them you know in the industry i guess per se like an old soul <laughs> yeah i mean that's look it's it's an, you know, what's really great about like the multi generational tin companies is, you know, you have that, you have that like deep knowledge, that work ethic, that experience, and then you also have that like other side of the coin, which is like you have kind of more of like an open mind to like a new business way, um, a lot of optimism in growth and trying new things. So like when you put those together, it really I think supercharges a business and. Um, that's why it's so cool that, you know, you're working with your family um, and you have that experience, yet you also have that, like, you know, you're just at the beginning. You're, you're, you have 30, 40, 50 more years ahead of you. So in that grand scheme of things, this is the very beginning of, like, a lot of what's to come. So let me ask you, right, just because you've already had so many people on your show and you've talked to so many successful businesses, right, I feel like I'm just – learning this like i've seen it and now like the theory i'm putting it to practice right um what are some of the other things that you can do like right now for example right we just got into the vinyl wrap industry so it's like you know my wife she really picked the vinyl wrap super quick it's stuff like that where we're jumping into that area i feel like i haven't touched flat glass area at all too as well which 
I feel my brother, the one that works about 20 minutes away, he works for a, a business that also does flat glass. So he's out there doing all of their flat glass installation too as well and stuff. But, you know, I don't want to spread myself too thin when it comes down to a lot of these services. Yeah. So, I mean, not that I'm asking like what you would do or anything, you know, but <clears throat> what are some of the things that I, I have, have an opinion have theory, but <laughs> you would say you might have as an experience. Yeah. Yeah. I have an opinion. I think that the number one thing, if I get one, one thing to say would be try to visualize it like a, um, you said it, first of all, not spreading yourself too thin. That is the number one enemy, I think, of anybody out there is not being able to prioritize the things that are most likely to succeed for you with the biggest impact and will steer you furthest in the direction you're trying to go. So what's important is, number one, you have to know what's the direction you're trying to go. So you have to have an idea. Right. Now, you don't have to have an idea for the next 10 years. It doesn't have to be an exact idea, but we have to go somewhere. Hey, I want to make 100000 in profit. I want to make a million in profit. I want to gross a million dollars. You have to have some clue of why you're showing up to work so that you can head in that direction. I want to build a team. I want to build a team of people who do everything I say. I want to build a team that can work on their own without me there. You have to have some sort of a guidance. And then I try to think about it or the way it just forms in my mind is like, think of like if you had like a cornfield maze, Right like a giant like right. cornfield maze, okay? And on the end of that maze is your perfect business happiness. And your job is to get through that cornfield maze to get there. Now, along the way, if you spread out in some random fucking directions, you're going to feel like you're making progress. You're going to be walking and all sorts of shit, but you're going in the wrong direction and you're not going anywhere near the direction you might really be needing to go. And sometimes... There might be something that maybe feels like it's the way it's going to propel you forward, but it's going to cause you to hit a dead end. So it's not going to lead you all the way. It's like a short, like, hey, this will help me, but is this going to get you to the goal? And I, what I'm trying to right. say is, you know, if I like the idea of, look, first and foremost, you're in a shop, you're physically in a shop. So I would not consider doing anything that involves you not being in that shop. Because if you're not in that shop, you're creating a giant problem, right. which is who the hell's in the shop? which now you're not in the shop. Somebody else needs to be. In. So like, that's a big problem. So like, I wouldn't even go. At, it has to be within those walls of your shop. Then I would say, well, what makes you the most money in that shop per time? What gets you in and out with the most money with the least problems? Like, right. you know, nothing crazy. We don't want to deal with problems. I would identify what that service is. And then I would focus on selling that service. That's it. So if it's like, okay. I make the most money when I sell our top of the line ceramic tint job on cars, my entire business would be focused on how do I get the most people to buy ceramic tint jobs? How can I market for it? How can I upsell them? I'm going to sell ceramic tint jobs and then go berserk with it. You know? Right. I mean, th those are the type of things that we lean towards, you know, and I feel like we've been pretty successful on doing that. I feel like I had to learn how to, you know, I went one of the high end shops really taught me how to do sales. You know, I'm talking about, you know, they're selling crystalline on a 97 Geo Metro that's probably worth more than the entire car. And it's like, yeah. dude, how did you do that? Like, I don't, I don't get it, you know, like, and he was able to do it. So I feel like that's one of the things that we implement here. And it's like, how do I say it? Like, I feel like we're getting to a level where it's like, we got here and what more do you go so that you're not just at that middle level anymore, you know? Oh. And I feel like, yeah. Yeah, right. no, that's, 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 you know, what came to mind is, first of all, like, I really like that you had so many different experiences in where you worked. You're kind of like a lawyer, like you went out and worked at different law firms and then you said, <laughs> I'm going to have my own law firm or like a doctor, you worked right. at different hospitals and then you're like, okay, because it really is like, you have to understand or people should understand, like when you go into your own business, you're in your own bubble. So for the most part, you're going to experience your own stuff forever. And there is a point where you may be like, I want to learn more. Like, how can I learn more? And that's the beauty of obviously online. But what came to mind with to me is with you is like you're down the street from the Tint Institute. And like I know Austin runs a really great shop. They do vinyl wraps. They do PPF. They do tint. They do training. And like I'd imagine instead of training you how to tint because it feels like you're, you're very experienced with that, um, there would be training on sales. And like you figure one weekend over there or one day over there or even maybe through video calls only could be like a game changer. 
So again, where, where did we start with this was identify what you want to do. And if it sells ceramic tin chops, now mm -hmm. we can figure out all the different ways to make that be what, you know, and an easy one is, you know, not easy, but sort of easy would be like, all right, if that's the goal, then we're going to, okay, you want to sell ceramic tin chops. So first and foremost, we have to carry a brand that has a film that's worthy of those high dollars because we can't, right. we can't carry the wrong brand to start and expect we're going to sell that for $800 because certain films like bring that sort of customer. So we got to have the right product. Now that we have the right product, if we say we want to come up for people who want ceramic tinting or maybe want crystalline and we're going to carry crystalline, then my first thing is let's jump on Google. Let's jump on our website. Let's jump on our Facebook and let's put out tons and tons of content about that film. So at first we can at right. least capture the people who are aware of it and they're easy sales, right? They're slam dunks. Yeah. And, you know, and we started that process. We know who we're going after. And eventually we're going to get to, well, how do we get more of them done in a day? And that's probably going to involve a plotter and maybe hiring a couple people in an assembly line of, of roles. And, and, you know, but like the answer, I think, to where we started is like knowing what you want and pursuing it. Because an example would be you mentioned vinyl wraps. If we if we agree that and we're not agreeing, but if we found out that we want to focus <laughs> on ceramic window tint because that's going to be what we can get in and out like when you say well we're learning vinyl wraps it could feel like a good add-on hey we can add it on maybe some people want it on the roof maybe somebody's going to want to wrap but now try to factor in all the time and money and everything that's invested in having that you have to have displays everybody has to learn it you have to have installers you have to have installers all the time with vinyl, you have to learn you're going to learn shit because you haven't been doing it for 100 years so shit's going to peel you're going to have all that time and money and energy and brain power when you're falling asleep. If that was just focused on let's sell some more ceramic tin jobs for higher amount, what could it be? And like, right. I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying I feel like those are the traps well, and, and you're bouncing, not you, but people bounce around from thing to thing. I got to buy more equipment. I got to buy this. I got to buy that. And, you know. Right. I, well, like, for example, I mean, I know this is like tint whiz talk. We're talking about window tint. Yeah. But I feel like tint shops offer all these services too as well, you know? And I feel like, well, for example, I've been rapping for about like four years, right? My <laughs> wife's same thing, you know? And so we've already been through all that sure. already as like this, this was legit my first one of my d decisions I regret the most because things where it's like, all right, cool, we'll wrap your car. We're, we're running into pricing issues. We're not charging enough. We're finding out this right. stuff is hella hard to do, you know? The disassembly like, compared involved. To, Oh yeah, but disassembly. Like, like you need to be really the same. a skilled like vehicle technician to take apart like a G wagon for t for wrapping or like you know like you need to know what yeah. you're doing. I, I mean, you 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 don't even got to go that extreme. I'm talking about like even just taking apart like a Toyota Camry or something. You know, that's still gonna take time. Sure. You know, a Charger, a Challenger. You know, so we got stuff like that, breaking clips, all that stuff, right? right. Doing it. Then once we're doing it, how you're saying stuff is peeling off and stuff. So. We got to a point now where we know how to optimize it. So if a customer comes in and says, right. I want ceramic tint, then cool. All right, I want my roof done too. Cool. I want to do the headlights and tell that too. Smoke them out. Good. Right. Instead of me leaving with a $500, $600 tint job, now I'm leaving with like a $1,200 job now for right. everything else that we've done. And that's beautiful. And so, but the, because you've, you've, okay. figured, you've, you've, you've got through the, the learning curve and you figured out one of the key things you said was we weren't charging enough. And I think that can be another trap where it's like, hey, let's add on wraps, hypothetically, not you, but let's add on wraps as a shop. Right. And then you say, well, we're new at this, so we shouldn't charge a lot. Let's just try and get some business in so we can get experience. So you don't charge no. a lot. Then it takes up all your time for no money. And then you're in your head, you're like, oh, there's no money in this. And I don't get it. Like, you have to charge. If you're going to do the service, right. you have to charge for it. Super that, important. That's the, issue that I have. that's the issue I have with hiring people because I have people that come and say, I either, I kind of know how to tint, I need to figure out the rest of it, or I want you to teach me, you know? I've only had one employee, actually I have two employees that they've come with an idea and I teach them and they learn really fast, like within a month, you know? And But because they're going home and they're practicing, they're trying to get it down and stuff, but I have people that they want to come and they want to, they expect to practice on my customer's cars. And I tell them, you, you can't do that, you yeah. know? Like, you have to first figure out how to do it first and then come to me or unless you want to be an apprentice where I'm not going to pay you a whole lot, but you're not going to be touching the cars, you know? Right. Um, and then they kind of get upset where that well, it's because you're not letting me know how to tin or so, but I can't let you touch these cars, you know, because you're going to make me lose time. 
I might have to redo this. Pull their own losing money. They got to pull their own vehicle and, in. They can pay for the tent, and then you teach them on their car <laughs> with their tent. Yeah, you know, and I feel like, and I feel like how with vinyl wraps and all this stuff and all these other services that you know I advise people to really do some research before you want to just jump in to do a different service. And that's what I mean because right now we actually we won a a printer pretty much like uh, to print out stuff. We won it. And so now it's like how you're saying you have to buy equipment. So now I got to buy a laminator and a, a bigger plotter now, which is like a good 12000 I got to spend now, you know? I need a bigger building now mm-hmm. because the stuff – You're going to need a big table. Here. You're going to need a big prep yeah. table for, for oh, your vinyl yeah, yeah. and places to hang it and the, like the whole deal. I, I need to go to graphic school or I need to hire a graphic designer now. And so it's a lot of right. stuff now. And these are the type of things where I'm, I'm kind of trying to ask. It's like – all these opportunities are popping up, you know? Yeah. Um, but in the sense of window tint, it's like, if I want to keep growing to a sense where I see all these really big shops, you know, I, I don't know what the next step would be, but I feel like it's just visualizing what it is that I want to do, which would be pretty much figuring out all that. Um, Visualize and what it's you scary do. Because, yeah. And it's scary because for me, it's like, I wish I could look up to my dad right now or my brother or my uncle to say, you guys are already doing this, but it's like I'm the one that's doing all this stuff before them now, and it's just yeah. like I don't know. Well, I kind of don't want to remember let them this down or something. Yeah, you're you're obviously on a good good track. The world's not going to like crumble tomorrow, and like the rug's going to be slipped out from under you. So like, as long <laughs> as you always like, because it feels that way sometimes as a business owner, like oh gosh, what could happen? But like, look at the end of the day, like as long as you have like an open mind and you're able to assess the situation. The same way your business is doing well, you'll always do well. If things don't go well for whatever reason, you figure it out and, and get out of it. It's not, you know, but um, I think I, I think one of the biggest um, strengths that you can have in your favor is do what you make money in confidently and save a lot of it. And then when you have enough money saved, you, you'll you feel that confidence in those next things you do and you'll be able to like really deploy the energy because I think what happens is just like it can be more exciting to spread thin and keep spreading thin and not only your time, but if you spread thin your money, you're opening yourself up for stress, worry, and problems. So like you're young, right, right. starting with kind of a little bit bigger of a nut, like I think can pay off forever as opposed to always playing like catch up, you know, depending on – right. You know, cause... I mean, that, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you know, we're just trying to like at least just trying to just grow, but be smart about it, you know, um, and just, you know, keep on like, like looking for new ways that I feel like right now, either like in my area, at least not a lot of tin shops are utilizing and stuff. That's why I feel like we've been ahead of some of the tin shops in our area because they're not using basic mechanics like, you know, Google and a lot of stuff like that. I mean, to like a, an extent that they should. Um, and even social media, which I feel like that's the big key right now. And it's all the advantages that, like I was, uh, I was saying earlier, it's like people are taking for granted or they don't even use or they don't even know they have, you know, right now. Because yeah. back then it was a whole different ballpark back yeah. then. Um, so, yeah. I wanted to ask. Um, so, you you know, you made Tint Wiz. And I've been looking at it and stuff. We're, we're going to pretty much talk about implementing that to our business and stuff. But besides doing this, and then also on the podcast, you talk about how you are a, you used to own a flat glass business. Were you ever into automotive too as well, or is it all just flat glass? Automotive as well. Um, the last couple of years we expanded, you know, and it was it, it, okay. So when we opened the flat glass, the intention was to also have an automotive. Like from day one, that was the intention. Okay. And not day one, but like year one, let's say. So when we rented an office space, we uh, rented an office space with a garage and we found out a few weeks into it that it was like in an alley. So you couldn't use that garage for like commercial business. Like, oh, no way. (laughs) So it wasn't a huge deal because then we were buying a printer. We had to put that printer somewhere and I had completely underestimated how much room a printer would take. Um, so we ended up kind of using like all that space that would have gone for the car shop for a printer and a table and for all that. So it went to flat glass only. And then a couple years before we sold it, we spawned off into an automotive location. And, you know, that was, I like, I want, I don't want to say it was a mistake, Because it wasn't a mistake because I appreciate all I was able to learn from the experience. And I really mean that. I'm not trying to sound like bullshitty. Like 
I appreciate no, no, yeah. it except like because I loved all the the experience. I learned so much. I get like it's a it's a whole different animal. It's a completely different animal right. than the flat class company. But like if I was drawing a perfect path, I wouldn't have made that decision because it pulled me away from something that was already taking a hundred and percent, hundred and ten percent of my time. Okay, it helped prove to me that you can't just pile more and more on yourself, and. I never got to give it the attention that it deserved. So, ah, okay. You know, what ended up happening was after we sold the flat glass company, I was like, well, that's not worth the time. And we closed it. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> you know, it's all good. I have no like hard feelings or anything about it, but you know, close it. It wasn't worth the time. Like it just, but I'm not saying that business wasn't worth the time, but I, I wanted to move into TintWiz to spend a hundred percent of my time on it. I learned that lesson. And that's why when you mentioned your business, like my mind goes to like, I want to make a lot of money. I want to expand. I want to grow. I want to have a team. I want to go to work at a beautiful facility that's like impressive and feels great and I can be proud of. But at the end of the day, again, it's it's a maze of like, how do you get from here to there? And to me, you get there by focusing and being real tight on what you do and then learning how to do that really well. So what I mean is like you're going to have one service or two services you focus on. You're going to know all your expenses. You're going to know how much that should be priced. You're going to be able to raise the price and feel it and see does that work, does it not work. When you go off in a million directions, man, you don't have time to do shit. You're doing everything. And like once you exactly. get to that point where you don't have time to do shit because you're doing everything, then it's really hard to ever reel that in. It's really hard to ever get back from that because – I feel like your brain, look, I'm not talking shit, but I'm just saying, I felt, I felt it to myself that when you're so tired and you're working seven days a week and it's year after year after year that you just, you're cloudy. Like you don't know you're cloudy, but like you're cloudy, you have to rest. And like, I'm not saying right. you, but I'm saying like, you have to rest. You have to have other oh, things no, in your no. life. Like I'm not, I'm yeah. saying like, I'm saying like you in general. And I think like, no, once, it's okay. No, because tr once you spread it, yourself it happened, out like and you commit to it, you know failure is right. not an option. So you're going to be there till four in the morning. You're going to work. You'll be there back at seven in the morning. You'll paint on the weekends. You'll do whatever the fuck you need to do. And <laughs> the, pr the point is, like, I don't think life is rewarded just by, like, putting everything on your back and then breaking your back. I don't think that's, like, the goal. Not to say hard work isn't a huge part of it. And you should go through those times to learn what they're like. And that goes back to the quote on your wall, which is something along the lines of you have to have a, like a shitty experience. You have to experience bad. Like that'll drive you forward. And I do believe that. I think for anybody who hasn't been through a really bad time, you should expect one sometime in your life. I think, I imagine that everybody's life has that downtime. And you should you should know it's coming and you should look forward to it because all you have to do is, is get through it. And what I'm saying is I just think that there's – if it hasn't hit you yet, those downtimes can be the most challenging times of your life. They can also be the most rewarding and in like things that you take for the rest of your life from them. So you should like almost embrace that like, hey, shit's not going to always be perfect, but I'm going to get through the good, the bad, and then the good again. Right. And honestly, I feel like that's the main thing that I feel like if tinners haven't experienced that, like there's, there's something real about going through those moments as a tinner. Because at that point, you're willing to do anything, right? But at the same time, too, you don't want to set a vision where it compromises your, your life. And I want to say, you know, right. even though I'm this young, I've, comprom I've compromised a lot of my personal life with my family, with my parents, with even my wife. You know, I used to work for a shop where literally it's supposed to be nine to five. I show up at eight just to be there extra earlier. And then um, like 530 is there and I still hear the man, the owner say, Oh, two more cars. Yeah, bring them in. And I'm looking at them like, who's going to tend them? I'm not going to tend them because I want to go home, you know? Right. And so right. stuff like that, right? And, and so what my dad says, right? And he has like this whole tint theory, right? Like he has a way of how tint molds people, their character. It breaks them, all this stuff, right? And he says that uh, in his words, you burn out pretty much. You, you, you like literally burn yourself out to a point where you hate tinting. All your work comes out shitty all the time. Like... You're going to get dirt specks everywhere. You're going to make cuts bad or whatever the case. You're going to start treating people like terrible. And you're not going to know why, you know. And, and that's what he says. You got to kind of take a step back. And it's a lot of things that you're saying, you know. Like, at that point, you know, it's like what, you're, you spread yourself so thin. And I feel like what people don't really realize, too, is if you're in a shop that 
makes you feel that way, you should really speak up about it. You know, like a lot of people that are employees, like my employees, I always make them feel like, hey, if you ever feel a way where you feel crappy today, like, I don't want you to say it every day, you know, but if something is going on or if I'm making you feel aware or if I'm putting a big load on you that you can't sustain, let yeah. me know. Like, because I don't want you to feel the way that I felt so many times, you know, in in ways where I, I don't want to be there. I don't care if you're paying me money. I don't care at this point. You know, I'd rather just leave because my talent is a lot more important than me hating it, you know, and then also... Well, I would go home late at night at eight or nine and my wife is kind of just there by herself. You know, it's right. um, I'm not hanging out with my parents anymore. I'm not hanging out with my family no more. You know, like it has consumed my life in such a negative way where it's like, well, I don't even want to do it no more. You know, or if I'm doing it, it's not because of goodwill anymore. But honestly, like people need to realize that, hey, man, like at the end of the day, like, you know what? I think most of my life has always never been in like a clean facility as a shop like i can't like sometimes i can't believe i get to just have a key to a shop and open it um a lot of the times it was always like literally almost every day of the week there was always a flea market going somewhere we had to load up the van you know set up our thing you know and deal with people like i think dealing with people was our main was at least my main number one thing where you would hear people just you know oh but you're a flea flea market tenor It, it should be it should cost me less you know and honestly, despite us being in the flea market, we would actually make them look good. Like we would close ourselves in the no. cars and t- inside the cars. Yeah. And we would we would get minimal dirt specs, you know, like. So I'm curious about that. Do, do you feel like, you know, I don't see in the Facebook groups, like nobody ever posts pictures of their day at work at the flea market. Like I've never seen it. Right. It's like never once. Do you think, and I know there's like obviously like a negative connotation with like, Tin thing at the flea market, but something that you you can see in a lot of flea markets is like the tin shops do really well, and like it's obviously a whole market, and the flea markets work and like whatever. So my question is, do you feel like having worked there, like do you feel like there's opportunity there? Like would you see it as maybe one day, like hey, I would put a crew in a flea market, or like would you want nothing to do with it because of the type of clients it attracts? No, so check it out, man. So. There is a, there was a tinter at the San Jose flea market, right? Some lady from like, oh, where was she from? I want to say she's Venezuelan or Puerto Rican. One of the two. I don't know what, right? She came to this country, married some white dude in that area, right? And she, she pretty much said, hey, I have a tint plan, right? She opened up this flea market um, tint little operation where she got two guys there. And they were tinting, and literally they were tinting about six to eight cars a day, right? Um, you know, about like two fifty each car, whatever film they're using, whatever the case may be. Before I knew it, in my era, they were over here, and I'm like, dude, what are you guys doing over here? Apparently, she set up an operation where she had like four different crews at four different flea markets, and this lady was just collecting. But she literally made a legit operation where, hey, you know what? Obviously, the first question is. Wherever you're going to set yourself up, if you're going to set yourself up at a shop, at the flea market, you're going to do mobile service. I have even worked at shacks before where my dad set us up at a car wash somewhere and we would just have like a little like maybe how you say you have a, a little nasty, ugly alley where you're like, maybe this doesn't work, but we're going to make it work. You know, like we would tint right there. Yeah. Honestly, I, I swear I was about maybe 12. Right. Uh, my dad set us up in Oakland. And me and my brother would go and work in Oakland, and it, it was really odd to me at first, but now I know why. My, what my dad would does is he does something set. He calls it fishing, pretty much. We're fishing for clients. What you do is you stand in the corner of the, of the street with the window tint roll out outside like this. My brother would take turns with me, and we would just do that, and some people would pull up. Oh, that's tint? How much? Pull it in. Hey. Cool. We would get work. But on the other corner, there was a girl on one corner, a girl on another corner, and some dude on another corner. And I would wonder, hey, why is that girl getting in the car and leave and she comes back? Like, why is she doing that? I don't know why. And why why is random people walking to this dude just buying stuff on and leaving? And I'm like, oh, well, we have a drug dealer and hookers on the corner. I didn't know that, right? I had some of that in my tent shop, too. (laughs) (laughs) Wherever you're at, right, you have to first choose your battles. You know, when you're at a high-end shop, you're going to choose battles of dealing with picky customers, dealing with warranties, right. dealing with stuff like that. Right. You know, when you pick up battles of the flea market, on the other hand, or you're working on the shack or wherever you're working at, in that kind of negative sense, right, what people kind of look on, 
you're going to have different struggles. You're going to have battles of people being kind of aggressive with you. I remember one time uh, my dad, he kind of started off in the Oakland Coliseum area. And my uncle still tents till this day right there. He left and my uncle took it and it's been there ever since. He's been shot at before over there, apparently. I don't know why, you know. One time, uh, my dad tinted a car for a few gentlemen there, and they came back. And, you know, he was like, all right, how much is it? He's like, well, you're looking at 200 bucks. Well, I only have 130 Take it. And my dad's like, no, you have to pay the, the $200. And people kind of get aggressive with you in some of those senses where they want to take advantage of you because they see you as, you know, people you could push over or you do just a service. Now nah, you're not professional. You're not real. Um, you might have to, you know, dirt specs, contamination. Those might be little battles where you have to really figure out how are you going to tint, you know, like how are you going to make sure it comes out as clean as possible? Stuff like that. Um, during right now, when the hour change right now, things are going to get super dark really fast. So it's like, well, you can only be there for a little bit of time. So right. there's a lot of things that you have to just choose your battles because every single like place presents a battle for itself. But I feel like, honestly, um, I tell people all the time, right, that are like professional tinners and they ask me about stuff like that. I say, honestly, try tinning outside when it's like windy. Just do it and see how, how good you could do it. Yeah. Not because... Not because of like, I'm trying to say that I'm better because I could tint in those conditions, but it's like, but really put yourself to admire that you can do stuff like this, you know, all the time, you know, people have to struggle with this every day, you know, and, and they can do it right. And then they can kind of make a living off of it. You know, um, like I tell you about that lady, she had an operation going and I was like, this lady's smart. Like she, the way she's doing it and she's obviously fighting some battles with whatever she has to deal with on a daily basis, you know, but it's, it's a, it's a thing that, well, if you're there for right now, that's okay. If you want to make a career out of it, well, choose your battles wisely. My uncle's been at the flea market for years now. I'm talking about probably like 10 years now he's been there. Right. But, you know, in, in, in the other side, though, I feel like you should really push yourself to grow. So if you really want to grow and say, I want to own a shop now, you know, I want to own – a team that can do mobile service while I'm here, or even if you want to operate at the flea market, you can, because that's what my dad did. While we were at the flea market, my brother was taking care of one shop while my brother was taking care of another different like spot that he set up to as well. So we were all working together pretty much, but it's a doable thing. It's just, do you want to do it though? Some people are like, no, I, you know, I feel like people are kind of just like, no, I only tint in my terms and that's it or, or get out of here, you know, but it's understandable why, you know, you wouldn't want to do it though. You know, like yeah, it sucks, man. Like, uh, like it, to some extent, it sucks, but to some extent, it's it's some of the most best memories I've had because of just some of the cool things you get to experience. I mean, some of the bad ones, like how you say, you go through bad things, dude. There's oh, like one of the, one of my ones that always sticks in my head, right? Was I remember one time we're about to finish work, right? We're 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 tending an Escalade, and it's super windy. So we have to tie down this tarp that we set up, right? It's made with these little metal poles. Right. And I remember my brother says no more cars because all of a sudden my dad, what he likes to do when it's like three 30, he's like, all right, guys, you guys got this. I'm leaving. I'm out. Right. And we're like, dude, like whatever. Right. So my brother says no more cars. We're done. I want to go home. And some guy comes in with the car. I forgot some rinky dinky car. And he says, I need a strip on my car. And I, I looked at him and I'm like, you're looking at like 70 bucks for a strip. He said, that's fine. I'll pay it. Do it. And I'm like, no way. Whatever. Right. So he pulls up and my brother's mad at me. He says, I told you no more cars. It's super dark. It's windy. We can't see them. I do. It's just a strip. It's 70 bucks. Who charges $70? Right. For a strip? So, so when we're pretty, pretty much finishing up that strip, um, in the time that I would have done that strip, I would have finished the Escalade. And so what happened was, is that the, a big gust of wind came and just, blew the tent away right it just it's gone right yeah when it did that it bent all this up and one of the tubes bent over and hit the escalator oh so when that happened right my brother just lost it he threw his roll he threw the roll of tin he threw all his tools he even like he looked up in the sky and said god why are you doing this to us god and i'm like that has nothing to do with this right but luckily the customer was super cool where like he just said i'm gonna just make it an insurance claim don't, don't worry about it stuff like that you know but it's like you have no idea what's going to happen to yeah. you that day. You know, like yeah. it might be a good day. It might be a bad day. But 
Um, it brings yeah, a whole I mean, new appreciation to today, doesn't it? Like when you walk in your shop, like you always have that as a frame of reference as like, I'm, you know, that's not, look, that's not happening to me today. Right. The, the, the flea market that one of the flea market I used to work for in this town, we used to come all the time over here. Right. When I was probably like eight, nine, um, I actually lived down the street from that flea market. So every Saturday I drive by that flea market every single Saturday. And when we left the flea market there, uh, some guy was watching us. He would ask my dad, hey, can you show me how to tint? My dad would be like, nah, just go away, right? Just you're annoying, right? But once we left, he took over that flea market. He's been there ever since. Yeah. So I get to drive by there every Saturday, and I see that every day. And it's always just like a reminder every single day, like every single week when I drive by. And that guy, when he has like a good five, six cars there all the time at the flea market, which, I mean, it's just a reminder all the time, like, dude, like, like I've gotten this far, you know, like, and I feel like a lot of people, I, I mean, I understand you open a business, you're going to go do everything, you know, with finding a building, getting a loan, doing all this stuff. But people like me, you know, I don't have a credit score to say, Hey, I'm gonna go take out a loan and get a business. Like, I just can't do that, you know? So I feel like a lot of people, they have a huge advantage when it comes to stuff like that, if they do it that way. But Hey man, like when it came to us, we were just struggling to survive pretty much. And it's like, we're going to oh. figure it out one way or another, you know? So, yeah, it, it's crazy, man. It could be an advantage, but it really is a disadvantage, I think, like when you um, – like I think the the, the things that will make you make the best decisions a lot of time will be not having a lot of money because right. you have it eliminates a lot of bad decisions, <laughs> you know, a lot of bad decisions about <laughs> spending money. So yeah. I, I, I know you're saying like – it's, I think I think a lot of people in window tinting kind of get into it because of that low barrier of entry and then the profitability of it, you know. Right. Um, it's if, if you can learn how to do it, it's a it's a it's a qu quite a great transaction. You know what I mean? Like, and then it's, from there, it's building a business around it. Yeah, and you know, honestly, like, how do I say? Like, I wish people would. I, I keep saying I wish a lot because I meet a lot of tenders, you know, like in, in the areas, right? And even when I go out to places, right? But they act really cocky, uh, unfortunately, at least from the experiences I met. Like, I feel so honored just talking to somebody and we're just talking about tin stuff like up in the air like this, you know, because I feel like a lot of people, they like to just like brag or front or say, look at what I got. And it's like, well, that's cool, you know, like whatever it is, right? But I wish people could realize that as much as some people see it as that type of job to say, Oh, it's because it's all about money. Right. I had one, one of the shop owners tell me if your shop, if your life isn't about making money, your life isn't nothing. And it's like, well, I guess, you know, like if that's how no, you that's feel, that's okay. But that's, that's just you, one that, random humans like way of trying to figure out life. Like I'm certain no, he's not let, that let happy, you, you know, if that's like, no, but let goal. me tell you this, right. Yeah. That, that guy right now though, he owns a really huge shop in San Diego. He drives a Lambo. He drives an R8, you know? So it's like, tin well, shop? good for you for that, you know? Huh? Tin shop? A tin, tin and paint protection. Uh, oh, and I think we'll he be able to figure it out. Glass, like on exotic cars. We'll be able to figure it out and by so, the Lamborghini so, after this. Yeah. And so the, so the whole thing is like, you know, he that's what he lives his life for. And honestly, okay, at least you're backing it up. But I'm pretty sure you're giving up so much quality of just everyday living life, you know? Doesn't matter. And, um, doesn't matter exactly you know i mean it'd be and, nice and, if he um, changed his, his opinion if it's rubbing people the wrong way but if he's happy he's happy and it doesn't matter like i feel like don't ever look at like all the people that like suck just look at the ones that are good and like you know what i mean exactly like, fuck the rest it is what and, it is yeah you know and so when i meet people i wish they could understand like from the experiences i had just tending throughout all my life you know and just being around window tint this isn't a job for me you know like literally like I can't do anything else. If you want me to fix your plumbing for you, I have no clue how to do it. If you want me to change a light bulb for you, I, I barely know how to do it. You know, like, yeah, I, I can't do anything else. But for window tint, it's like I can do it. You know, and I can do almost any car you throw out at me. You know, like I have people that they they turn down cars like Corvettes or they turn down bugs. And it's like, oh, I would do that all the time with my dad. You know, it's like and people yeah. are amazed. You could do it in one piece. You know, it's little things like that where it's like. I never complain about a lot of the circumstances that a lot of tinners I've met, unfortunately, that have plotters and have all these things that, oh, my plotter cut it wrong. And, you know, like the short, the patterns are too short. Like, well, hand cut it then, you know, like, or I don't know. I feel like Some of these people, I, I feel wish... like you could apply that to their entire life. Like they're probably complaining about the Dude. blue sky. The sky's too blue. And, uh, right. You know, 
But I think it just sucks because when people have to like throw our industry under the bus like that to be like, oh yeah, I know that's you know tinting is not the way it is. You know, it's like no, you have to understand like you like I said, you have to respect window tint. You know, like if you don't respect window tint, it's not going to respect you and the attitude that you have. You know that, and that's what I've seen with a lot of people where they've owned these shops or they try to make their own like side hustle on window tint and it never works because of just that aspect where. Honestly, every single day, it's just like I come to work to something that I really like. I can't believe my passion for window tint inspired my wife to say she has a, a bachelor's in political science. She's supposed to be a politician right now. With Thank you know, God like, she's in your shop. And instead, <laughs> instead she she gave that up to be here with me, you know, because, you know, I feel like I couldn't contaminate her with the passion of it's like yeah. we get to wake up every day and do whatever we want. You know, we don't get to like, you know, this is a different job compared to most people's like every single day, nine to five. So I don't know. It's just one of those things that I wish people can see past, or if you don't see it right now and you have a nice shop and everything, you know, like admire it, you know, every day, you know, because like, like I said, I've been through the ones where they're super good and I've been through ones that are not so great. I've been with that to drive three hours every day just to be there. Um, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's nuts. So. I feel like, you know, the way to get that out there when you say like, I wish people felt that way. I wish people like kind of um, were appreciative or respected that and so on, like window film and so on. Like I feel like the best way to get that out there is like living it yourself, which I feel like you are living it. You're living that passion. You're like from, we're like a minute into this and there was comments about like, what a sincere, nice person you come across. As. <laughs> so like you're living it. But then the next step would be like people getting to meet you. And obviously they're meeting you now, but um, maybe, you know, consider if you have some time on your hands and you're looking for ways to expand, you could do a vlog, you could do videos, you could do videos that, you know, your customers appreciate and bring you more business, but you also um, maybe inspire people along the way to come work for you or to start their own business, whether they're local or not. So Right. And I mean, you know. we do, we, we started doing that too as well. Like these are the type of things where it's like, I literally, I'm on this close of getting someone to just be here and just film us so that we can do stuff like that because i do all that stuff by myself as well but that's okay that's the same thing don't, don't make an in. excuse that you need somebody and, in here to film you because now you sound like no, a painter no, complaining no, about a plotter or no, whatever no, no, no. okay because, just no, saying look, if you go on our page we, we do that a lot you know and it's so weird because i have people that come and they say i want to bring my car to you because i want to get the experience that your shop gives us and right. i kind of look at them like my experience, like I'm nobody special, you know, like I, I no, but you but obviously have a lot of experience. The power, well, because so. social media, you know, we've been using it a lot right now to a, a set where we were, you know, we kind of document ourselves a little bit and just kind of just hang out with people too as well. I, I think the one where we started connecting to a lot of people is um, uh, my wife, she was actually diagnosed with lupus uh, a while back ago. And so we had to close down our shop. When we closed it down, literally we were closed for two months because I had to drive her out to Stanford like every single day. And um, or I had to go be there all the time with her and stuff. And literally it costed me things like I lost like my some of my local dealer accounts here because for them it's business is business, which I totally understand. You know, right. people were blowing me up every day. I'm like, I can't take your car right now. I'm not going to I don't know when I'm going to be back. Right. And so like I felt really weird about it. And I kind of just made a video about it, you know, and I just kind of showed a a moment where it's like we're we're human you know sometimes i feel like people look at us like we're a walmart you know we're open all the time or we're like have it your way like burger king and it's like no dude like that's not the way it works yeah. you know and so when we kind of brought that out there we we made so many connections with people because like people kind of like seeing that i guess people like seeing some type of oh, humanity yeah. in businesses where i feel like people have been in tent shops where they've been robbed where they've had terrible services they've you know, have complaints and stuff. So when they saw something a little bit more human than that, um, yeah. And then when that took off, well, we started doing videos and and minor vlogs, wrapping vlogs. I think were our big ones because we're, it's just me and my wife, and we could just mess around and stuff instead of being nine to five and everybody's walking in and out through our doors and stuff. So we started doing that, but uh, That's awesome. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. If I see your guys' Tint Wiz page, and you guys do stuff like that, and it's it's kind of cool. So. You got to pursue it right because. Now, Really, the person to look at is um, Matt from Detroit Tint Studio, um, window tint stuff. Also, like, you know, he does, I don't know if you've seen him, he does, like, live streams with a GoPro on his forehead. Oh, no. <laughs> you've got to cool. see him. Like, they're, look, they get, like, three to 500 live viewers. Like, they're 
legit like his video quality his audio quality is on point like he had a thing where like if you do like a chat tip it blows up a balloon and then eventually that balloon explodes in a shop like you know like it's just like he's <laughs> he's like he's like next level and i think you should definitely check him out um that, 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 matt's legit that's super cool I, I didn't like and you know I, I feel like you know when you get to a platform that big you know it's honestly like i don't know I, like i'm kind of scared to get up to a platform that big just because I still think every day I still feel like I'm just a normal person. I don't want no one to look above me because sometimes I have people that will come in as customers and they want to like, they're the, you know, they come to the front and they're like, I want to speak to him. And I'd be like, okay. So I'll go over there and I'd be like, hi, like, well, do you need some windows? Tinted? You know, like yeah. it, it, it kind of throws me off a little bit sometimes, you know, but I feel like there's a lot of people that they, <laughs> they want that publicity, but for like all the wrong reasons for like their own egos and like, all this stuff and like i, I, I would feel say like, like get just, all that out of your head and just help the customer yeah whoever yeah, yeah. the customer is customer wants to speak to you then you're the person to speak to them and whatever it is it is but get all that stuff about egos know, and it, what other people it, out of your it, head. It's, it's i it's, know but it's like i see it every day on a constant matter. basis and i feel like i know it's crazy it's just one of the things that i have to, i feel like a lot of my growth in business right now it's like a new age where, for example, that's necessary right now, honestly, for you to get to a next level that, you know, right now the social media is like the biggest platform that you could use right now. And I feel like, you know, we see tons of shops that are doing it, but a lot of the ones that have been around for years, they're kind of stuck on some of that because they don't know how to do it or because they don't have a team that, you know, is reacting all of their business and stuff. So I don't know. It's it's cool though. Like I can't believe that people are doing stuff like that though. Like I, think, I gotta I, check them out. <laughs> I think the key is not to be like too critical of yourself or of other people, and just simply like do something, do whatever you want to do, and just know that naturally by doing it, you're gonna get better at it, and it's gonna work its way in like to a spot that works for you. So like you can't predict what right. it's gonna look like. You can't make the finished product today. Finished product be like 10 years from now but like you got to start somewhere and i think being hyper critical of yourself or of others and meshing in what you don't want to appear as and i don't want to seem this way like you know it only stops you from creating something and you don't know what you're going to create and that is the next question yeah. what do you think your business what would you want your business to look like in 20 years from now 20 years from now puts you at what 46 ish yeah, that, that's a lot, you know. So, so 46, uh, 20 years from now, I, everything goes reasonably right. You don't win the lottery, but everything, you know, you harness the power of your experience. And 20 years from now, what do you look like? Right. So um, I feel like right now, well, first off, okay, 20 years from now. Well, first off, I would really want a nice building, a building that when you walk in there, you could drop off any car that you want, first off. You know, I feel like the big thing would be presentation. I feel like if people don't look at that right now, you should totally look at that right now. I wouldn't want to leave my, you know, Tesla X at some garage, you know. I would Would you leave it at your leave... garage? No. You wouldn't leave a Tesla Model X <laughs> oh, at your okay, garage? Like my, my, shop, my, my, my shop garage? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. I thought you meant at my house. No, like, here. Like... <laughs> right here. Like the place you're at. You would put a Model X there. So what I'm saying is uh, 20 years from now. The first thing you mentioned you need improved is your shop. And I think your shop looks perfect. I don't, I mean, it's not like... It's not like, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably in the top 80, 90% like best shops. Like as far as cleanliness, it's open, it's big. You could pull a bunch of cars in there. Like what's the, what's the problem? I can only, I can only pull like three. Well, only reason but, why is like, so because I know my shop looked way have. worse than that because it was in a shitty area. What? It was half the size. And I know we had Rolls Royce and Ferraris overnight there. So like you cannot tell me. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with your shop. Like nothing. Okay. For 20 years, we got to start this question over. 20 years yeah, from now, in the over. order okay. of most, from now. in the order of most important to least importance, start with the most important thing. What do you want your, what do you imagine in your business? Oh man, you're throwing me on the bus right now because I'm barely getting the vision of this shop. Okay. So I think the main thing for me is first off, I guess I would want to live stable first. I feel like my main thing right now yeah. that I struggle with is, is financially the whole like saving thing. I feel like okay. I finally started getting the hang of it. So at least with that, I would want to first project the whole financial part of it first off. Um, 40 years from now. 20, 20 years from now. 40 years from now. Oh, 20, my bad. I thought I'll be fucking, 40. 
<laughs> way too long. <laughs> 20 years. I know, yeah. Uh, so, okay, let's recap. Yeah. Number one thing, financial okay. stability. So whatever right. shop you have, you want to be financially comfortable in that. And I imagine, is that something like financial stability, something you kind of bring from like growing up? Like, I don't know. I'm guessing because myself, that's a huge one on my mind because I had money on my mind when I was like six years old. Because when you hear it from well, your that- parents, you like live it. And then your whole goal becomes how do I escape financial like uh, burden? And uh, is right. that what you're basically kind of coming well, from? Okay. So, so, the re- so the reason why I would say that is because I think like the first two years of my business was pretty much me making money, but I wasn't making money though. It was like, where's all this money going towards? So you know, I numbers. thought- so at least the shop that's running, it's making money where you could really see the profits coming in first off, you know, okay. um, 20, 20 years from now too as well. I mean, I know this is going to be really random and out of the ordinary, but I really, really want to try to take a stab at online sales. Uh, and what I mean by that is because I see a lot of people trying to do that right now. I see one successful business model that no one's been trying to do. Huge opportunity. So I'm a... Huge oh, opportunity. Yeah, no one's doing people it. will click yeah. on like like they'll they'll maybe call you and they'll say like hey how much is it ceramic coating my car and you'll be like that's twenty five hundred dollars with paint correction and then they'll go well I got another quote for twelve hundred and then you're like yeah but it's better why is it better and then they call you back and you do all this shit and then in another reality on your website it's on there for thirty two hundred and somebody at midnight pays for it and you're like what the fuck and you wake up exactly. in the morning and you're like. Okay, so when are you coming in? You know what I mean? Those are two different realities. And exactly. one is an enormous opportunity and how people will shop in the future and currently are shopping. Um, so I think oh, yeah. and, 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 the head and I, that one. And I think the, yeah, the people that are up at night, you know, when they're bored, I feel that's the most yep. impulsive purchases that I've ever made and most people made statistically. And so no one really, I feel no. like no one's used that to it. So that's a good one. You're right gonna, there. Yes. So that's one of the things you're going to like about TintWiz is – one of the things oh, yeah. like we go over really is like, look, when somebody calls in, everybody goes into the system. So somebody calls, they get a quote, you type it in, it takes one second, their name, their phone number, what happened on the call. And then when you have a minute of downtime, anybody has a minute of downtime, you can in about one more minute, send them a quote for whatever you quoted them to their phone and to their email simultaneously. It takes about a minute to set up a proposal. You could set up one option or multiple options. And if you do that, what happens is you might get 15 calls a day and maybe you schedule eight of them. But the other seven calls called four other shops and they maybe took notes on and they maybe remember who's who. And by sending them a quote through their phone and their email, which took you a minute, you capture a higher percentage of those other seven that weren't going to go with you or whatnot. And like that little bit of, of thing, what I'm saying is that's when you start getting those app- approved proposals on a Sunday night at midnight. And you're like, oh, that person was from three weeks ago. They just approved a proposal and you schedule them. So right. like it works yeah, for cool. sure. Yeah. You know? And I mean, I'll be in contact with you about all this stuff just so that you can give me a lot more of it in depth if there's any questions I have about that. So yeah, all this stuff right now. And I feel like running a business with the technology that's going to be available for us in that time yeah. uh, and just keeping up with everything. And I think my major one, um, would be making sure that my business name or establishment becomes a brand. I feel like people don't really take a, take that to a really big, serious consideration where I want my my company to be recognized in, in, a, in a way where people see Coke. Oh, cool. That's cool. I want people to see when you see the West Coast Customs W, it's like, oh, okay, you should know what that is if you're in that's the That's a lofty goal, industry. dude. I'm not putting yeah, it down, but that's a big goal. Like, that's a, a good Let one. me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Sure. I missed a really huge opportunity where I had a business that came up to us and said, hey, you know what? We are partners with Rocket Bunny uh, Body Kits. We are a partner with uh, Paradox and all these other companies, right? Which these are really huge Japanese body kits and really sought out for parts for all these drift race cars yep. um, in the area. And this guy... He makes all that stuff for them. And so the reason why he came to us was first a tint job. And then he asked if we can do some vinyl wrap on some of these things, but they need to be custom. And they also, once you partner up with us, in a sense, I'm going to skip the fee that we introduce to businesses that want to come in and work with us. But we push each other's products pretty much. So you have to first have an online product. You have to have your name as a brand. And then um, you have to just be consistent on all of our stuff all of our meetings all of our groups and these are 
companies that they expose you to hundreds and thousands of people each on just of their pages. So when I got presented with this opportunity, I said, well, first off, my company just it's just starting. I don't have a product to sell. Um, and if it was, it's not going to compare to any of your guys' names. So that's going to be really hard. And then I had to decline the opportunity just for my namesake because I didn't want to spread myself super thin to say, I'm going to do something that's going to fail. And so when I got to see these Supras and RX-7s and Skylines right in front of me and I missed that chance, I thought to myself, I'm never going to get a chance at this again. But I know that chance is there. So I feel like that's a goal where that's why he's successful and all of the businesses that he works with because they are a brand. And I know that's extremely, extremely hard to pull off, but that's I feel good. The, like the hard goals are the one major goal. Like hard goals are the ones worth going for. So I'm just saying that's a right. good one because it's like a meaty big goal to be like a name that comes out of people's mouths. Like I was getting a haircut and I mentioned Expel to my barber. And my barber has a TRD Tacoma with like a rooftop tent or a you know, tent over the bed and like fully decked out, suspension wheels, the whole deal. He didn't know what Expel was. And like, right. I'm like, how? I, I literally, I'm like, <laughs> like he's 24 years old and he's a vehicle enthusiast. For him to not know about Expel to me, it was like a, it was like a slap in my face. I was like, like, okay, I'm living in the window film community world, no, no question. But even somebody that fits the demographic that's out there overlanding their vehicle doesn't know about scratch protection for it and so on. So to me, anyway, my point being, that's why it's such a big goal because even somebody like Excel of course. in there, like de what I think is they're a really like prime demographic, somebody, you know, 24 year old that's spending $10,000 in aftermarket on their $50,000, $40,000, $50,000 truck, 24 years old, you love your vehicle. So like, you know, anyway, good right. goal. Uh, oh yeah. Well, I, and the only reason why that's in, that's in my mind is because the, the one of the main people that I see that are online and sell that I look at their business model, right? the reason why they're successful is like they're selling like custom banners with their names on it and people are buying a bunch Merch of them off and, them. It's and, like, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. And it's like, your name is out there. Like that's mm -hmm. crazy. Like, and people that you would never expect, you know? So when people come to me all the time and mention this company's name all the time, and I'm like, Oh, well I, I think it would be one if I knew, about it, but then just random people walking in here, like, Oh, I saw this on this company's website. And it's like, Oh, well, you know, obviously they're getting territory. So, I mean, I know it's not going to happen overnight. Maybe in 20 years it'll happen. So, but that would be it my... It could happen over the night, overnight. At least me to be... Yeah. Yeah, I know. For me to be, to say I have a successful business and I'm happy where I'm at, um, I think that's what it would be. And honestly, to me, this business is kind of like my dad's legacy. So I'm holding on to it in that sense where it's like, I want to make him proud. Even the name, right? My company name is Polaris Window Tint, and I hate it sometimes because people call me and say, hey, I need a transmission for a Polaris, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, sorry, you got the wrong one, you know? The reason why my dad calls it the Polaris is because in Spanish, it, to tint your car, to Polaris out of your car. So he just chopped off the last part and named it Polaris, and it's like, I want to kind of change the name. but And then people kind of like it. I don't know. People have been interacting with us in that way where they – kind of want to represent us and this merch and it's like i'm slowly starting with my city and my community right now and then you know i hope my my online presence of sales will be the next thing coming up right now especially since we got this printer coming in right now but hey can i yeah. ask why did you get a printer if you when you were starting your business oh yeah had that so, business? so like Okay, it wasn't necessarily intentional. So, you know, we started, we we're doing jobs and we started getting requests like, hey, do you do graphics? So I was like, well, what do you need? Well, I need my numbers replaced. So we we're doing anti graffiti and we were pulling off somebody's uh, like letters okay, or whatever. Okay. So, what we started to do is we were going to Fast Signs because we really had no options. So, Fast Signs would produce it for us and then we would install it. Now, that's a pain in the ass and it's obviously expensive. So, um, somehow it was like a chicken or the egg. Like we bid on a job that was a supermarket and it was like, it's an enormous supermarket. And this supermarket's actually been in like, it's in, um, El Monte. They have a few locations, but El Monte, California is like one of them. And it's been in a lot of movies and commercials and our, our perf is on there. And basically what I'm saying is early on in the business, we got this huge job to do printed perf on, of like fruits and vegetables on, uh, on this, um, okay, okay. on this supermarket. And, that job, I mean, it paid for most of the printer. 
like that one job. Oh, okay. So like we bought the <laughs> printer, we were printing out an enormous job. It was my first time like working with graphics, we figured it out and it was off and running from there. And then we bought another printer because the first printer we bought was a Roland. It was a printer and cutter. It was a um, solvent printer or a, yes, a right. solvent, solvent printer. Latex. And it was, it's not latex, yeah. It was great and it printed white, so it was great. We did all our like gradients on there and so on, which was a huge market. Like, I, I just, a little pause, just saw an opinion that I've never really expressed that I, I want it. Frost on itself, just frost, is a business. You can just sell frost. You can specialize in frost. Frost for homes, frost for businesses, decorative frost, frost with the reveals, printed frost, gradient frost, fucking frost in itself is one Dude, thing that you can hey, specialize in and killing. When, when I when I went to um, RapsCon, right? It was a convention for just raps. Johnson was there selling a printable window tint. I said, what? There's a printable window tint, but it's yeah. not, you can't, you know, use it for automotive. Right. But you know how dope that would be if you so, could do something like that, you know? And there's a lot of clear latex, like clear um, materials that um, you can print on of as course. well now that like you can just laminate onto something and what, whatnot. And basically, the, you know, we started with that printer and it was cool because it was a printer and cutter. But then what we realized was a, um, a latex printer was going to be helpful because it, it didn't print white, the one we, we ended up getting, the HP, but it did print a lot faster. Um, it was a little more durable yeah. and scratch resistant, and it didn't bring the smell of the ink and so on. And the nice thing was we bought a separate plotter, so it was really nice to have the plotter and the printer as separate functions. At first, it seemed very attractive to have one machine that did two functions, but you quickly realize how slow those machines work, so you really actually want to have those things separate so you're not tying it up um, so much because... You know, printing right. can be like super slow, like especially I've, if you're I've printing white. Before, yeah, super slow, like 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 an hour for one window of white, like a conference room window, like an hour. So anyway, right. um, graphics are a fucking great business. <laughs> They're a great yeah. business, and you want to get a big plotter, you want to get a big printer. That way, you can say I'm not gonna have seams in this, or you know, you. Want, but at the same time, you can find a local wholesale printing company that can handle all your printing needs with no investment you don't have to learn you don't have to have the scrap and waste your time and screw things up and outsource it too so what i'm always saying is you can tackle things from every direction you just have to know what right, you're right, trying exactly. to do. just what do you want to do and do that yeah you know i think that's going to be the lesson for today what do you want to do with people what, what do you want to do with your life what yeah, do you want to do with you got to know you got to know what you want your business to look like and then you can head in that direction you, you know right Oh, and, and no, I just wanted to add because yeah. you got you got printers. So I was like, well, I, that that's been popping in my head the whole time. I was like, why did you get a printer? You know, uh, printers so, are great. But that I feel yeah. like I feel like just like if I was to, if I was to open a flat glass business, which I absolutely one hundred percent will not. Um, I can't say that, but I mean, I can say that one hundred percent will not. Um, I would say like if, if 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 a friend was opening one and I was like, he was like, give me one one word of advice. I would say. If it was like right now, friend, flat glass, weird scenario, he's asking me for this advice, I would say focus on frost. I would say just get frost. Yeah. I would say carry your solar films too because people are going to ask and just so you, you, you have them. But like I would just focus because when you really focus and you specialize, like if you go out there and you go, no, Eric's advice is stupid. I'm going to I'm gonna just – I'm going to tackle all aspects of flat glass. I'm going to do residential. I heard commercials <laughs> great. Then I'm going to get scaffolding and I'm going to learn lifts and I'm going to get crazy insurance and I'm going to get workers comp because I need a crew. And I'm going to and I'm going to and I'm going to run consultations. I'm going to do all these things. When no. you could go, I'm going to specialize in frost. And when you go into bid a frost job or when somebody's looking for frost, they're going to find you because you're named – you know, the frost window film frost specialist. And when you quote versus yeah. another one, you're going to go, all we do is frost. We know this business inside it out. Our frost lasts longer than their frost. Our frost is this, this, and this. And they're going to go, why would you go to the company who does tint all day when we do frost all day? And right. Code, like, I mean, look, honestly, like I, like, you know, they always tell me all the time, right? That tinting curve windows will pay your rent, but doing a flat glass nah. will get you rich, right? Automotive that's, that's, will make you rich that's, too. That's it's not say, true. Right? That's, that's what, that's that's what, what the automotive people you, right? say. That's what the automotive people say. And the <laughs> flat glass people are like, I need to they, expand into automotive. Like, <laughs> that's what they tell me, right? And so I think one of the gnarliest jobs I ever was a part of is they subcontracted me to go. Um, they initially wanted to remove and retint like about 800 windows at a hospital, right? Yeah. But the crazy thing about this thing was the way that it was, these windows were really long and really wide. And we had to like grab the ladder and kind of like bend it like this right over the window like this mm -hmm. um 
And so when you're doing this, right, you're literally like, like this looking down about like six stories, right? And so that's all we did for about 800 windows. We're just looking at them like this and scraping it. And I'm just looking down six Terrible. stories down. And I'm just like, and I'm terrible at heights. I remember Terrifying. the first day I got up there and I couldn't do it. And my brother was with me. And you know what? I, I just got a burst of energy. I said, you know what, man? If we don't do this right now, we're never going to do this. So I got up there and got brave and started doing it. So then he got brave too. He got up there and started doing it. And then little did he know the ladder, how he set it up didn't work. So he started just kind of just sliding off and he just fell off. But it, like, I mean, you didn't fall off six stories, but yeah, yeah. he fell from a pretty dang height. Yeah. And everybody downstairs was looking at us and they were freaking out as some dude just fell off six stories. But that was one part where it just took us a long time to scrape off all this burnt tin, right? Not only that, we had to go to like the front of the, the hospital and we had to use a lift. And little did we know when they subcontracted us that they didn't give us somebody to instruct us on how to use the lift. So we had to kind of just figure it out and do that was like the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I would never right, but do then, a job But like then that you could easily again. have a business that specializes in that type of work and all your work is on ladders yeah. and sides of buildings and so on. And I'm just simply saying whatever you do, specialize. If you're doing cars, I like the idea of making your tagline, you know, we special like specializing in heat blocking window films. That means that right. people that are looking for heat blocking are coming to you, period. And then the people who aren't right. looking for heat blocking, you can go, we specialize in heat blocking window films. So a lot of companies put window film on that just gives you privacy. We specialize in heat blocking films. Here's what we have to offer. And you're already like shaping their mind as to like, oh, these guys do this, I can trust them, or I, I'm interested. Right, right. And like, it's just specialization. So I, I just, I feel like I want to keep reiterating, it's not a right or wrong, it's not frost or solar, it's defining what you do, because it's too attractive to try and do everything. But when you do everything, you know, be ready to do everything, and, and it is become can become a challenge to then attract customers that are looking for specialists because it's, it's weird you have customers who are looking for everything but you also have right. customers to know they want the other customers want to know that you're able to do everything at a high level so it can't just be a, exactly it can't be an afterthought and you expect it's going to be part of your business right and i feel like that took us a while just because what happened was when i first started opening my business it was like at the right time where i left this company that was in the same area that i was and it was like they were the best ones because I was one of their lead installers. I left because I left. The other installer left, so the shop in the place is left with no tinner, pretty much, right? So when that happened and I started helping my dad do this business over here, um, we were charging kind of cheap at first just to get customers in the door. But when they saw the quality, it was like, oh, this is amazing. But now the, the challenge was, was for me was to, hey, well, you've seen that now, so my prices are going to go up because – you guys know the work now, you know, so that is but a I weeded out, you know, <laughs> I weeded out a lot of the bad ones, you know, to all the good ones. But yeah, it's always good to just and that, that's what I always have a struggle with hiring people, because that's what I have to tell them. Dude, you have to know how to do this at least. Or if I can trust you just to do back windows or just mold, just mold. And that's it. You know, at least I'm going to pay you just for that, you know, but because you specialize in that until you get down yeah. making doors or doing the back glass and stuff. So. It's one of those things where that's our main thing too as well, where we don't really like doing anything unless we know that we can do it pretty much. I'd rather just not – because the times I've struggled doing something that I didn't know how to do, they were like the worst decisions where I lost money on it. I lost time on it. Right. Um, worst headache of all time. So, but, are, you gonna, yeah. are, you, are you planning on going to the tent off in Orlando in January? No, I'm not. I, they're actually doing that. Yeah, I feel like they're doing. A I, mean, I haven't, I haven't kept up with anything at all. So yeah, but like they should be shoving it down everybody's throat. So like I can't believe how many people still don't know about it, or like there's posts on Facebook like what are like how do I how do I like register or whatnot, and that just to me feels like they're doing like not the best job of like, you know what I mean? Like I'm just well, who's in charge? Like do you mean just the sure. organization that? Yeah, it's like the window film <laughs> magazine. I don't understand. They probably have a list of every single window tinter. There's in a window film, uh, dude. I, Okay, I've, fine. I've That's fair. I've learned then. things from you. They were obviously yeah. unable. I've to learned things you. from. <laughs> no, I mean it's not that. It's just I don't really inform myself with a lot of things like that because it's like I'm just tending and that's it. The only tune up I've ever been was they did like a local one for Solar Guard, uh, and just to go hang out with the family and eat tacos, and that was it. Though you know, but besides that, um, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a not... window film magazine. 
and they're a great company right. and they do a lot for the industry. So I take back everything I just said. Um, <laughs> but there's a magazine. It's free to subscribe. So you should definitely go on and subscribe. And they put on a okay. yearly tint off and window film conference where um, different window film suppliers set up booths. And then they have a tint off for automotive, for flat glass and for PPF. It's usually in September. It's in different states. Last year it was in Indianapolis. Um, unfortunately, this September, a couple months ago, was uh, not. It did, was canceled because of COVID, and it's rescheduled right. for January, maybe twelfth through the fourteenth, I think. Um, you can type it, type in Tintoff twenty twenty one into Google, and you'll get to the page. You can still sign up as a competitor if you like to compete. It's about one hundred and eighty dollars, I believe, and. Um, there's a hotel there and everybody should go. And I just think that like, right, yeah. if the window film magazine ever listens to this, what they should do is run Facebook ads to every single tinter that they have on a list. Cause they have everybody and, um, everybody should know about this. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, I've seen it before on the, on the Facebook groups. Like I always see who wins or something. Yeah. I think the only time I saw someone win, I think they were from, um, Nevada, I think, or Las Vegas, I think, who won one like two years ago or three years ago. But that's, that's it. I mean, it's, look, it's a really I'm great not, place to go and meet people. Just and to like, go? Yeah. yeah, you should definitely go if you can go. Um, and and like when you said like you know, hey, like I, I I don't like people like bragging and that sort of shit. I don't think there's any of that at like this conference. I think like that stuff right. kind of like people leave that shit online and like at the conference, it's all about like just like one on like meeting people, hanging out. Everything's cool and you get to meet a lot of people, like a lot of people from manufacturers that you may never use, but they're great people and, you know, you never know where that leads. So I hope you can make yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, because it's the, it's the first time, like the RapsCon one was the first convention that I went to that was something like- In Long Beach? Uh, anything like that. Yeah. See, that's like, and that like was just, similar, that was but small. not as good. Oh, yeah. But yeah, and, and you know, but I got to meet people that they were immediately like super cool, super informative, stuff like that. You know, um, I always keep missing SEMA. I always want to try to go to SEMA, but I could never make it to SEMA. And same thing, I hear that the, the same thing at the blast over there, you know. Yeah. And then, yeah, when it, but that convention just kind of gave me a cool idea of we should go to these more often, you know, like, so yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. Tint off Orlando, yeah. January. <laughs> Tint off. I probably won't compete though, but I'll I wouldn't. Just for fun. I wouldn't compete because it's your first year. I would go. I'd scope out the scene. I'd get an idea of everything. I would enjoy every minute of it, and then you'll know next year if you want to compete. Because if you compete, right. you're going to be on stress level ten the entire time, running around, keeping up with deadlines and timelines, and like, I think you should go relax. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll look into that. So that, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I've learned so much from your from your podcast because I was hearing things of like the the window tint organizations that are that are out there and stuff you know and it's like i i never even knew this stuff even existed yeah i didn't even know that things existed you know yeah but i feel like it's not because they weren't doing a good job of no it is it's just no it is you I, can stop I, I there seriously? it's no, because they're not doing well, a good job right there. no no way stop I, right swear, there. I, I might have not i might have not known about this stuff at all you know no in that case uh, it's because they're not doing a good job of everybody getting to know about it it's, <laughs> the, it's just the facts it is what it is i'm gonna say it and I hope it changes. Uh, it's not to put anybody down, but it is a fact. And um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, but it is what it is. Thank you for doing this. I think um, it was a pleasure getting to know you. You are an amazing person. You're super like, you You know, like it's basically what I said earlier. You come across as such a great guy. Uh, you're you're an <laughs> example that. of what makes the industry like a fun place and why like I enjoy doing these so much because you and I, when would we speak? Maybe at the tint up if you found out about it. But through right. this, we get to chat. I get to know you. And, um, and uh, you know, again, thank you so much. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. And I, I appreciate just people like you doing stuff like this, honestly, like, uh, like I always think about people having one-on-one -on -one conversations like this and just like putting them online and stuff or like just podcasts like this. And you're, you're like, you popped up and then I got super intrigued, you know, because not only, not only are you bringing just simple people like me, I guess you're bringing like heavy people, like you're bringing window film reps, owners of film companies, your own, you know, you're bringing all these giants to the plate, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, a, it's amazing just hearing all the things that, Thanks. You know, you you bring to the table, and then also your company too. I, I I'm so stoked to you know. I, I'm gonna hit you up later on with just asking you questions about the things that TintWiz can do for our business, and then we can just get all this place going to modern times. I guess. <laughs> Let's do it.
thanks again, man, for doing this. It All was right, really man. good meeting you, and um, we'll chat soon. All right, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next Wednesday. Have a great evening and weekend. Bye, everyone.